All right, well, welcome to our final lecture day here. Um, <clears throat> as I mentioned on Tuesday, we're not going to have a whole lot much to talk about today. I'm going to go over a few things, but we're not going to have a full class. So let's just go over what matters here. Let's get to your assignment. Okay, so we did five, section 5.4 on Tuesday. And that pretty much, if you didn't notice, your entire homework is out of section 5.4. So there's really nothing out of 5.5 in the homework nor the quiz. So that's that's the good news here. Let me, I'm going to go over the PowerPoint of 5.5 just for a little bit. I'm not going to cover every, every detail of it. Um, just enough to get you, you know, to see what's going on here. So, okay. All right, so you see here, we're talking about this fundamental theorem of calculus. And I, and I remember I popped this up the other day. So looking at this, all you really have to understand is what we already did. It, it kind of sort of puts it into an official formula here. You know, they talk about finding the area under the curve, which we've done, and how when you start getting an actual curve like these here, what it's doing, what you know, what what these different values are talking about, you know, all this stuff in here, this region, and they start off with nice regular shapes that we know how to do, you know, because there is a formula for a, a uh, sorry a rectangle, you know how to find that area. There's a formula for a trapezoid. You can actually even go and get that triangle's area and then get this rectangle's area and add those two up to get it. And the idea is that if you did the integral of this function, you get the same thing. You get the same amount right there. So that's that's kind of the game that's going on here. So the fundamental theorem of calculus is just basically saying it's the antiderivative, okay? The integral from the, the higher term, the b. Remember, this is always supposed to be the bigger one. It's supposed to be the smaller one. You plug both those in and you subtract them, and that difference is going to be the area under the curve. Um, so I'll just walk through a couple of these examples here, just kind of a refresher. These are, you know, sort of the, the next level ones from what we did on Tuesday. So if we're evaluating this function, we're integrating from one to three, and remember those are the values you plug in for x, we're gonna take the integral of all this. So remember, don't lose sight of the idea that we are simply still looking for the integral, okay? Nothing has changed in that aspect. If you can get this answer right here, All that, all you do is you do one more step at the end to do this, okay? But priority one, let's find the integral of that. So as you recall, they may not write this out. Yeah, they broke it into pieces. Remember, I, I already, already told you, this is not necessary to split it into three different pieces. You can just take the integral of one piece at a time. Um, again, remember how we're doing this. Up the power by one, that goes to three, divide by the new power, and basically that makes it cancel off. That's why there's no coefficient in that first term. Here, the integral of ex is just e to the x. The negative two stays out front. And of course, when you have a one over x or an x to the negative one, the integral is the natural log of that, um, whatever that item is in the bottom. And then of course, the three stays there. So this is how you would normally do it and you get that plus c, okay? Now we're not gonna go with that route we're gonna evaluate it from three to one. So you take this answer that we just got, and they didn't really show it right there, but all of this stuff, <clears throat> remember we're gonna plug in x equals three, we're then gonna plug in x equals one, and we're gonna subtract those amounts. So they didn't show the work, but that's what they did right here. They put in the three, so we get three to the third, minus two e to the three, plus three times the natural log of three. And all of that is subtracting, and again, remember we plugged in x equals three, now we plug in x equals one from back here, our original limits of integration. So we then plug in the x equals one, and, and I'm plugging right into here. We get one to the third minus two e to the one plus three natural log of one. And essentially all of this is the negative 
and all of this right here is a negative 4.44. Okay, and you can easily plug these in your calculator. Remember, you know how to find e to the third. Multiply that by negative 2. Add the 27 to that negative amount. It's, it's going to be a couple of steps, but they saved the parts and just showed you this is what you get for the two parentheses. And then remember, you're always subtracting that parentheses, so that essentially becomes a positive 4.44. And our end result is this negative 5.44. Okay, now if we're talking area under the curve, remember we're not supposed to have a negative. What this probably translated to be was, if we're going between, oops, one and three, we probably had a curve down here. So the area that we're finding below the curve comes out to be a negative number, hence that part right there. Okay, that's what's happening here. And it could have even been one of those where it was a little higher like that and it canceled off either way. If they're asking us to find the area, that's a different game versus are they just wanting us to integrate? That's all this question was saying is just go integrate that. So whether your answer comes out positive or negative, that doesn't matter. If they want to know the area, then we're going to have to make some adjustments. We're going to have to work with that. But right now, that's, that's all they're asking was go find that integral. Okay, so again, a couple things here. We talked a little bit about this last time. If I'm going to integrate this, I can do a u substitution, as you see. u is going to be the bottom, du equals 2dx. So I got to put a little 2 right in here and put a 1 half out front. So there's my du. And then I have 1 half integral of 1 over u. That's this part right there, essentially how they got that. Okay, then we integrate that, we get one half natural log of u. And so remember, this is the answer we normally would get with the plus c. When we have a definite integral like this, we're not using the plus c, we are simply taking the answer that we just got, where is it? Right here, no c, we plug in the one and the zero. Okay, so when you plug in the one into here, you get two plus four, so we get natural log of six. When you plug the zero in here, you get a four, and we subtract those two answers. Then it's just calculator work to make sure that it, it works out and comes out to be the same. Now, the big thing I, I talked about the other day is when you do a U substitution, so if I had the same problem right here, so if I had going from zero to one, one over two X plus four DX, now, when I go through this whole process, I get the u, I get the du, and all that stuff. Oops, 2dx. So when I get to this point right here, what you have to remember is we have a 1 over u du, okay? Just what we had earlier, remember, right over here. When you get there, you can't put the 0 and the 1 there because these values right here, this is an x value. That's an x value. Once you have a U problem, now you need to have U values there. So there's a, one way to do that where you might have learned if you've taken this before, or if you get in a future class where you can rewrite these. I always like to just put that little A and B in there. Doesn't matter what you call because it, it's just a filler. So then when I go to the next step, I get one half natural log of U and I'm going from A to B. And that's just a reminder. Oh yeah, we got to bring it back to the X's. So that's where I get the 2x plus 4. And then now that I have the x's, I can use the actual numbers. And then we follow what we did right here. Okay, the big thing is don't go plugging in the 0 and the 1 in, or in, into this answer right here. We don't want to see 1 half natural log of 1 minus 1 half natural log of 0. First off, you can't take the natural log of 0. Second off, most importantly, these are x values. You only replace x with them. If you have a U answer, you better not plug in these original ones. Okay, now you'll see here, this is the technique where if you wanted to go with the U's, you can do this. So follow along here, U equals 2X plus 4. So remember, they wanted us to integrate from X equals 1 all the way up to, oh, sorry, X equals 0 all the way up to X equals 1. That's our limits of integration right there. They're x values. Okay, but knowing from our u substitution this right here, 
I could plug in the x into that formula and you see how I get u equals 4. And then when I plug the 1 into this same formula right here, plug 1 in there, I get a 6. Now, those are essentially your new limits of integration. So if you wanted to, see what they did right here? They did this process, they did a u substitution, but now, instead of that little a, b I wrote, they wrote, wrote u values. The equivalent u value for x equals 0 is u equals 4, based on our formula right there. The equivalent value when x equals 1 of u's is 6. So now I can do this. I can rewrite these. I, I change everything. So remember how we said no more x's. Let's make everything u's. That's a u. That's a u. And let's even make these u's. And now when you get our answer right here, now you can actually proceed because you have u values and you don't have to substitute back. So maybe that might be intriguing or, or preferred way by some of you. Works the same, and in the end, we get the same result. We get that 0.203 just like we got right here. Okay, so it's an extra step either way. You either have to convert your little x values, these. You have to convert these to the new u values by doing this, or you have to substitute back from u to x. Either way, there's an extra step. It doesn't matter which one you pick. You're getting the same answer each way. Okay, so let me go back. And like I said, we don't need to see the rest. You can check it out if you want. But for what's on the homework, what's on the quiz, what's on the final, we're not going to have to see any of that stuff right there. So let me go back and show you what the homework is, what the quiz is, all of that here. Okay, so here's our homework, and we've pretty much done that. I wanted to just look at one or two or three more problems here. We did 43. Just wanted to show you 44, 45, and 46. Sometimes I know these end problems are little thorns in your side, so let's see if I can get to these. Okay, so number 44. So they want us to integrate this, and it might seem a little familiar with you. What we get is we have 0 to 1, and we're integrating x minus 1 over x squared minus 2x plus 6 dx. Now, the first thing you should check when you're integrating this is look at that denominator, that trinomial. Maybe you can factor it, and then maybe something will cancel you know, you'll get a factor of x minus 1, it'll cancel off, and you'll get a nice, easy uh, thing to integrate. Unfortunately, in this case, it doesn't look like anything's going to integrate or, or cancel off because you try to factor this as much as you can, you're never going to get x squared minus 2x plus 6. So that being said, I'm going to let the entire denominator be the u. Okay, now remember, I can do that without a problem. And that's going to give us a u, a nice u down there. And that's kind of one of your goals. You don't want to have multiple terms in the bottom. So the easy fix is let u substitute and replace that. Well, when I do my du, that's the crucial part. I get 2x minus 2 dx. Okay, now that's what I need to have in my original problem. I need a 2x minus 2. Well, if you look at it, I have an x minus 1. What I can do, though, is... I can multiply that top by 2 and see what you get up there. Hopefully that's right. There it is. You see, if you have this 2 parenthesis x minus 1, if I was to distribute that out, that would in fact be a 2x minus 2. It would give me the exact thing I need up there. So I can do that. I just need that 1 half right there out front. So the orange stuff that I put in there, those cancel off. It's multiply by 2, multiply a half. But now we get what we want. All of this becomes du. So there's my du. All the bottom becomes a u. So I have one half, one over u. Now at this point, like I said, you can do this a and b like I've been doing. Or let's try that new technique and say, well, how about let's switch our limits of integration. Now, you may or you may not like this. Here is our u substitution. Okay, that u squared minus 2x plus 6, that's what we created. Now, if x equals 1, when I plug it in there, I get 1 minus 2 plus 6 
Looks like I get a five. So that one has become a five and it's now a U value. So I don't have to worry about substituting back. Same thing when I plug in X equals zero to this thing right here, I get U equals zero minus zero plus six. So it's just a six. I got that right. Okay. All right, so now we plug in our things here. We integrate, I should say, I'm sorry. We get a natural log of u, and we're integrating from six to five. Now, if you notice, normally it's six on the top, five on the bottom. This happens sometimes when you do the u substitution. You can get you know, reverse things here, backwards things happening, and that's not the end of the world. It's just how it is, and you'll see what happens in our next step here. So I get one half natural log of five minus one half natural log of six. And then this is just a case of plugging these in your calculator. And also, yeah, and do, they do say around this to two, three decimal places. So we're gonna go to a calculator. Now I'll show you another thing. Maybe you'll like this, maybe you will not. I can factor out that half. And the only reason I suggest that is that might, get, that might make it a little easier for us to use our calculator in, in this particular problem. So, all right, so I'm gonna plug in natural log of five. Five in my calculator, hit the natural log. Then subtract six natural log, and we get this answer. Then I'm gonna multiply it by a half or simply divide it by two, and I get this decimal negative point zero nine one one six rounding that three decimal places should give me zero nine one and now we'll see how that worked out and there's our answer okay so that's all it takes and like i said they were not asking for an area so don't put up a red flag saying wait a minute i'm not supposed to get a negative it's fine unless they're saying find the area. They were just asking you literally to integrate this right here. And that's the end of it. Now, if I didn't do this stuff over here on the right, I could have done the integration and got the one half uh, natural log u. Then I would have had to substitute back and say one half natural log of x squared minus two x plus six. And then I would have plugged in the zero and the one there, and believe me, it would come out to be the exact same number. Okay, so that's all there is on this one. All right, so let's look at the next one. And Bridget, I'm sorry, I just saw your comments right here. Final exam is gonna be up very shortly, and it's due a Thursday night next week at 11.59 p.m. So you have essentially a little more than a week to do it. And I'll go over that right after I do these last couple problems here. Okay, um, on this one, this is one of these where it looks really bad, but it's not as bad as it appears. So first off, you know, even though everything looks the same, they are completely different. As in the top and the bottom. So the top there has a, a minus, the bottom has a plus, and it's squared. That means there's no canceling that can happen. Nothing's going to cancel off right here. Okay, so what we're going to do is, like always, I don't like to have multiple terms on the bottom. So I'm going to let that parenthesis down here be my U. So I'm literally copying that bottom parenthesis as I see it. And so you see, this is what I'm shooting for. I'm gonna make that bottom a u square by this substitution. Now, when I do the du, I take the derivative, well, I get e to the negative seven x times negative seven. Then I get the e to the seven x times regular seven, because I'm doing the chain rule. So you notice I need all of that on the top. Well, I almost have it. 
I need negative 7e, negative 7x, plus 7e, 7x. All I need is to change these signs around right here. I need to make this a positive. I need to make this a negative. So how do I do that? I just stick a negative in front. And that's going to change all those signs, just like how I the last problem I multiplied by 2. So as long as I put a negative out here, I'm going to be fine. So now all of this, sorry, all of this becomes my du. And all I had to fix it was putting a single negative out front. So I'm integrating u to the negative 2 du. That's going to be u to the negative 1 over negative 1, which is negatives cancel off. We get just a 1 over u. Okay. Now, in this case, it doesn't really make a difference what you're going to do, but I'll, I'll do it the other way. Now I'm going to substitute back 1 over e to the negative 7x plus e to the 7x is my answer. And I'm going to integrate that from negative 1 to positive 1. So watch this next step, how I get this. And we're going to have to use our calculator in a second. So I plug in 1 to the first one. So that's e to the negative 7 plus e to the positive 7. Then over here, I plug in a negative 1. So that's e to the negative 7 times negative 1. That's e to the positive 7 plus e to the negative 7. Now, I don't need my calculator because what I want you to see is these two denominators are exactly the same. They're going to all just cancel right off. And I should get just a zero right there. That's all it is. Now, that's not always going to happen, but that happens in this particular case because these are exactly the same. You know, they're both, you know, e to the negative 7, e to the negative 7, e to the 7, e to the 7. They're both adding. So we get the same thing. Now, if, if you really wanted to see it on your calculator, it will work. Just to kind of show you. Where's my calculator? Okay. So for that very first one, this parenthesis right here, all right, I'm going to get e to the negative 7. It's that number. I'm going to add it to e to the 7. And that's my denominator right there, 1096.634. Then I have to put that over 1, and I hit this little button right here, which does the reciprocal, and I get this point zero 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 nine one one eight eight. Okay, so now just remember that. Now over here, I do the same thing. I'm going to find e to the 7th. I'm going to add it to e to the negative 7th. And then take the reciprocal of that. And you notice we had a positive one. We had a negative one. And they just cancel right out. So that's all that's happening right there. Okay. And this very last one, I just want to talk about it. Number 46. Now they talk about the mean value theorem, something you'd see a lot more of down the road if you took another calc class. What it's saying is that if a function is differentiable, like you can find the derivative of the entire way in some interval from A to B, then there exists some number C in the middle such that the following is true, that you get this. Now let me just tell you this in English, what, they, what they're trying to say here. Okay, so... Okay, so imagine you've got some curve. And here's my A. Here's my B right here. Okay, and no matter how that curve is. Okay, make it a function. Let's go back. I want it to come back on itself, but let's say it's that right there. What they're saying is, there's some c value here somewhere. We don't know where it is, such that if you were to take the derivative of the c, so remember what the derivative means. It means if I take this point right here, the derivative is a slope of the tangent line. Okay, so we know how to do that. We've been doing that all semester. But what it's saying is, it's that slope is going to equal this. Well, in English, what this is, this is y2 minus y1 over x2 minus x1. This is basically saying that slope right there. So between the two points, there's going to be a slope. 
they're saying at some point in our graph, one of our tangent lines is going to have that same slope. And you see what's going on here. Right there, you see this one? It has the same slope as this one. And in fact, there's going to be another one over here that does the same thing, but at least one of them is going to have that same slope, something in the middle. Now, they use this example here with the car speed. Okay, now this is a little more realistic in, in what you guys are, are used to here. If you have a car, you go on a trip and you average 63 miles per hour. Okay, so that means in a 30 minute time period, you average 63 miles an hour. In English, what that means is you've gone in 30 minutes, you've gone half that. You've gone 31.5 miles. So regardless, you're averaging 63 miles an hour. So couple choices. Either you're going exactly 63 for 30 minutes, which is possible with your cruise control, and that would satisfy this equation saying, yep, there's some point in there where your speedometer said 63. Or if you go up and down, you're stopping, you're going faster, you're slowing down, at some point your speedometer went over 63. So here's what I mean. If we average 63 miles an hour, at some points, let me, let me do this better. Okay, so if I look at our speed and say it's 63, at some point we might have been going kind of slow, but in order to catch up, we're going to have to go a little faster. Somewhere we're going to cross that line. That's all this is saying. That's all this problem is at. It's just kind of giving you an overview of, of what this mean value theorem is. Um, again, it's just one question, so don't get worried about that one. Just something to try. If you don't get it, not the end of the world. We've got plenty of other ones out there. So now let me go back to where we are here. Okay. So let's show you your assignments. Now, you'll notice something if my timing is right. There it is. Your final exam sitting there right now for you. Okay, it kicked on just a couple minutes ago. Let me talk about this quiz real quick because this is still due. This is still some of your points that matter. Remember, your quiz points are the lion's share of your grade. Your final is important, though. Your most important one thing that you have. But just real quick, let's look at that quiz. And just to kind of make sure none of these are, are different. Okay, so this talks about those rectangles with the right sum, the left sum, and all these things. You can kind of look at that. You sh saw that on your homework if you've already started your homework. Calculate the indefinite integral. Main thing, make sure you see, by the way, this three is a cube root. It's not a three to the third. So this is not 27 to the square root times the square root of x. This is three times the cube root of x. So that means, <clears throat> excuse me, we are integrating 3x to the one-third. And don't let the 0 and the 1 mess you up, okay? You still integrate like we've been doing so far. That means adding 1 to the power, dividing by the new power, and then once you clean this up, you plug in 1, you plug in 0, you subtract the answers, and that will be the, the amount you put in there. And again, I'm going to confirm, just like you're doing your homework, make sure you read the instruction. Sometimes they want an exact answer. So like in this case, we get 9 quarters x to the 4 thirds. So I put in the 1. I put in the 0. That's just 1. So we have 9 quarters times 1 minus 9 quarters times 0, we get just 9 quarters. Don't plug in the decimal. You need to plug in when they say a specific simplified form answer, they want that 9 quarters. They don't want a 4.25. They don't want a uh, 4 and 1 quarter mixed number. Leave it as an improper, but simplify it. So if you get, say, 10 sixth for whatever reason, reduce it down to 5 thirds, but leave it as an improper fraction, but make the numbers the smallest they, they can be. Okay, so that's the number two. Uh, number three, they're talking about how to add these all up here. So if you're going to get the definite integral, just remember, anything below the curve when you're doing an integral is going to come out negative. 
So this B and this D, if they want, they want to go from zero to A. So they want to go from here to backwards. So there's a couple things you have to do. Oh no, sorry. Yeah, zero to A. A is back here. So that's kind of a problem. But first, this is normally negative. This is positive. If we're going from A to zero, that's what it would be. But if it's zero to A, we have to flip the numbers because they're going reverse. You normally have your integral going from left to right. If they ever go from right to left, you just have to put a negative. Okay? Um, Gabriella, your, your question about how much homework do you need to complete, it's probably the same amount. The 60, 70% is what I have as the minimum on there. I could tell you, though, for quiz 15, and I'll come back to that final in a second. Okay, let me try this. I have to look. I don't. It's not showing me right now because I have the. I can just jump right into it. But I want to guess. It's it's approximately the same as what you guys always have for each of yours. All right. So let me just get through a couple more of these. And, and like I said, you shouldn't see anything that's surprising. Okay. So on these right here. Um, I'm going to tell you right now, I don't know if we had this even on the homework here. Yeah, I'm going to take out number four from you guys. So don't worry about number four because we actually didn't cover that one. Um, this is the one that you got to figure out here. What's the left? What's the right? Okay, and then we're talking about the third, the third rectangle here. So remember, when it's an L, sorry, okay, when it's an L, what we're talking about here is we're talking about the top left corner is touching the, the graph. So in this first picture right here, what's touching the graph? It's right there. So this black one is going to be the L. And then we're talking one, two, three right here. So if we just count the boxes, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. We're getting eight right there for that first one. What's the R3? Well, then that's when the top right corner, so we're having a little bit bigger, we're going to have nine of them right there. Okay, and that's all those are right there. They're going to tell me, uh, do I want to keep going? Yeah, we're good. Okay, so again, don't worry about number four. I'm going to take that out, so everyone's going to get that one for free. Here, it's the same thing as we did a minute ago, so same kind of problem as number three earlier. Here, they want us to calculate some change. This one's a little easier in the fact that they want us to use the geometric formulas to calculate this. So that's you having to look at the, um, what do you call it, uh, triangle formulas, trapezoid formulas, or, or rectangle square formulas. Nothing, nothing fancy on that number seven. Okay, on this one right here, um, Make sure what are we on number eight. Okay, so research department, and I'm gonna take this one out too, just because we didn't cover this one. It's not on your homework, so anything not on your homework, I'm not going to cover here on the quiz. So I'm just gonna give you this one as well. So give me a second. If you've already done this one, don't worry. Um, if you already submitted the quiz, number four, number eight, whether you got it right or wrong, everyone's gonna get those right. Number nine is like the one like I did a couple minutes ago. So hopefully you saw that. The only difference is you're plugging in two and negative two. But hopefully you'll notice it's not going to change the answer too much at all. And then you get one that <clears throat> makes the most sense here in this one. Now they want us to evaluate this one. Okay, so we get this x squared minus 4x plus 6 to the 11th power. All right. Now. Don't get too far into this one because there's something special you, you should see. It should look just like a formula that you've had before. Okay, exactly like that. Something to do with this one and the one. I'll tell you right now, you guys are not going to be able to integrate this. No matter what you try, you can't do a U substitution. You can't do it regular. The one way you can do it is you can multiply this thing out 11 times, but that's going to take a long time. So there's a special answer for this one. So hopefully you'll see when I yank out number four and eight, quiz is not so bad. I just want you to, you know, I, I didn't want you to get 
too stuck on this one. I tried to make this one a little more reasonable just because of what, uh, you know, where you are, what's going on. I want you to worry about the final exam. That's that's my main focus here. Okay, so let me let me get back into that assignments just to kind of show you the final exam. There's one thing that's going to be different for the final exam, just to give you a warning. So um, it says right here, 1215. So Thursday, December 15th, one week from tonight at 1159 p.m. You have two hours to do this. So recommendation is start this thing before 10 o'clock. And even if you started at 10 o'clock, that's a bad, bad idea just because you want to make sure you don't have any problems. If you have a tech issue, you have a you know any kind of a computer problem or internet issue, you have to restart your computer. You're losing valuable time. So <clears throat> the quiz, the, sorry, the exam will close at 11:59 p.m. So if you start this thing at 11, you may have two hours, but as soon as the clock hits 11:59, you are your your test is automatically submitted and you can't get back in there. So my recommendation is start this a few hours earlier in the daytime just in case. Now when you open it, you'll see the first big thing, you only get one attempt out of this. It's not like the quizzes where I let you take the, those twice just to make sure this is a one and done shot, okay? And the clock starts the moment you, you do this. So if I started my test right now, okay, and it's, what are we at, 10.07 a.m., that thing is due at 12.07 p.m. Even if I close this up, like that, and then came back an hour later, it, the clock continues to run. So I'm gonna make sure to emphasize that, make sure you're in a place where you can't get distracted, you're not gonna be able to pause this, you're not gonna be able to resume this later. You can resume it later, but you will, your clock has been running, you're losing all that time. So, finishing it, and you'll see there are, I have, what do I have, 29 questions in this one here. Okay, so there's a handful of questions. And it spans from everything that we've had this entire semester. So here we're doing something as simple as write an equation of a line. Here, and it's all mixed up. We're doing a problem like we had today. If I grab number 22, find the intervals where it's increasing, decreasing. And my hope is that if you've been looking at the practice final exam, you're being reminded of these things. Here I have to graph a function. So the idea is that you're not relearning them during the exam. You're relearning or refreshing your memory when you're taking the practice exam so that this stuff will be all ready to roll. You'll have some notes ready. You'll have some, you know, sheets to look at something so you don't have to spend five minutes on every problem looking them up. So just kind of do the math here. We have almost 30 questions. You have 120 minutes. That's a little bit more than four minutes per question. Okay. There's a lot of time to do this if you're prepared. If you're just, like I said, trying to, you know, if you look at this one and, you know, and I mentioned this the other day to a couple of students, I can hover on number 19 and see it's from chapter one, section five. So I can go back to section one, look in my book or chapter one, section five, and look at it and figure it out. In doing all that, I'm wasting a lot of valuable time. Okay. So look through your problems, hit easy ones. If you're, if you're going through one and you're like, oh, this looks tough, skip it, go to the next one immediately. Just go to the next one. They're all worth the same. So get as many of the, quote, easy ones done as you can. Even if you're like, well, I'm not too sure. I think I got this to be, you know, six. You can put it in there. And then when you come back to it later on, you can revisit it and say, you know what? I didn't like that six. Let me try this again. Oh, it doesn't exist or whatever. At least get an answer down. Okay? Your first one. But if you're uneasy about it, don't spend another five, ten minutes redoing it a bunch of times Save it for the end because what I don't want you to do is all of a sudden you're on number 20 and you look and the clock, wherever the clock usually, all right here, all of a sudden you get this red letter saying, hey, you have, you know, a minute and a half left and then you're just rushing through these. You want to make sure you give all your problems, it's, you know, the appropriate time so you can get the best chance. Okay. So like I said, we're pretty much done here. This is the, the short day because we've covered everything we need for this. Um, like I said, I'm going to take out that number four and eight from the quiz, just so you guys don't have to stress about it. We, you know, you've got enough on your plate. Um, quiz is important. Final is obviously more important. Quiz is due Monday, four days from now. The test is the final exam is due seven days from now. So obviously, get that quiz. Don't don't skip it. 
Um, you know, a lot of people will say, well, I'm studying for the final. At least take that quiz. Get some points out of it. That 20 minutes you spend on the quiz is not going to hurt your final exam studying that bad. But the points will matter here. They Everything matters when we're adding these all up. Um, so pretty much, like I said, we're finished here. If you have any questions, feel free to stick around. If you come up and encounter any issues or questions in the next few days, um, I will... You know, I'll be in my office hours. I will, if, if needed, as I said on Tuesday, if, if next week, you know, you want to sit down with me on, on here and just talk about a couple of these problems and go over a few of these, shoot me an email and, and I'll schedule something with you, you know, even on Tuesday, Thursday, when we normally meet. It's not like I have any other, um, <laughs> you know, classes I'm teaching at that exact time. So I'm kind of wide open there. So if you just want to uh, talk, shoot me an email. We'll, we'll confirm some times and then I'll, I'll show up and we'll go over whatever we need to go over here. So other than that, uh, good luck on the final exam. Have a great rest of your finals week and semester. Have a good break and let me know if you have any issues and hopefully grades will be posted. You know, the exam's not due till a week from now. I try to do the grades in the next day or two after. I know they're due on like Tuesday the next week, but, um, I'll try to get them in ASAP so you can at least see where you stand. Uh, Hazy, a couple of, one more thing before we go here. Hazy has a question. And also, remember, the grade you see in my math lab is not exactly your grade. Look at the syllabus. Look what it states. It says every quiz gets added up and the final exam gets added up. So I think you have 13 quizzes, 20 points each. That's 260 points. You have a 100-point exam, 360. And all those points tell you what your final grade is based on the scale. And Hazy, you brought up the point I wanted to remind everyone of is I do drop your lowest quiz grade. So if you've missed one, it's gonna get dropped automatically. If you did bad on one or whatever, whatever your worst grade is, I will drop it. The only exception is if for whatever reason, you did all of the quizzes and, and even your lowest one is better than your final exam, which sometimes happens and it'll actually be helpful to you to keep your, your quiz, then I'll keep all of them. So I'll, I'll do whichever way is the best for you mathematically. Okay. Again, stick around if you have any questions. If not, good luck, and I will chat with you next time. Have a good one. Hi, Professor.